Okay, for the um, end of question number 14 from June 2014. Okay, um, again, even if you didn't know how to do parts A and B, they gave you the answers for A and B in the question itself. Show that, show that. So, again, there's seven marks here which you could easily gain, all right, um, without having done the first two parts of the question. So, don't, as, as I said, don't ever give up. Look at all the parts of the question, and then, you know, see what you can do from it if you if you do have have a problem. Although I hope none of you have any of that type of problem. You can do all the questions. Now, it says use calculus to find the maximum value of v, giving your answer to the nearest integer, and justify that the value of v found in part c is a maximum. So the maximum and minimum is found by using the gradient function, which is what you do when you differentiate. Okay, so I've got to differentiate the V with respect, the volume with respect to X. So I'm going to find what dV dx is. Now this is already perfectly set up for differentiation. So I've got dV dx equals. Now what will happen here is the X term will just, the X will go. You have 160 times root 3. Okay, that's just like when X is just to the power of 1. You multiply by that power and then you take 1 away from the power. So you end up with X to the power of 0, which is gone. And then you've got minus, and you've got 3x squared. Okay, now the maximum and minimums are found when the gradient function is equal to 0, okay, when something is in turning, all right? So we need to find it when dv dx is equal to 0. dv dx is equal to 0. So we have 160 times root 3 minus 3x squared is equal to 0. So I have to solve this equation. So we can bring that to that side, you have 160 times root 3 is equal to 3x squared. And we can divide both sides by 3. Okay, so we have um, x squared is basically 160 times root 3 over 3. So x will be the square root of that. 160 times root 3 over 3. So we work out what that is. Okay. So we have the square root of 160 times root 3 divided by 3. That gives us 9.611. Let's see how they wanted to set, express the answer. It's the nearest integer. Okay, so first of all, x is 9.611. Leave it as that. Because that's not what we required. We required to find the volume. Okay. So we'll say, okay, therefore... The, the volume will be 160 times. Let me do it down there. We've got more space. Okay, the volume will be 160. therefore, whoops, <clears throat> therefore the volume is going to be 160 times our x value, which you can write as 9.611. Okay, uh, times root 3 minus 9.611 cubed. And what we can do is you can use our answer in our calculator and proceed like this. So that's the answer in our calculator. Okay, so we can do 160. I'll show you what's going on. So put it here 160 times the answer times root 3, okay, minus our answer cubed. Okay, that's using the answer in the calculator in this exact form, and that will give us the volume required, which is 1,775.69, so 1,775.69. The question told us to write it to the nearest to the nearest integer. So we're going to have 1,000, 1,776 cubic centimeters. Okay, then it says for part D, this is part C. Okay, part C. Justify that this value found is a maximum. Now to do that, 
Okay, to justify that it's a maximum, what we need to do is we need to take our differential that we found earlier. Let me take this. Okay, and let's bring it down here. Oops, it's the wrong thing. Didn't, didn't copy. So we take our differential that we found earlier. Okay, and we find what's called the second differential of it. Okay, so this is the first differential, and this is the value of x we found. x was 9.611. x was 9.611. We want to show that this is a maximum. To do that, we find the second differential d squared v over dx squared. Okay, now if you differentiate this a second time, you're going to get minus 6x. Okay, and when you substitute x into x equals 9.611, okay, into this uh, second differential, the second differential is going to be minus 6 times 9.611. So we can see that this is going to give us something that's negative. Okay? So we can say as as d squared v over dx squared is less than zero, therefore this, for this value of x, the, therefore the x, therefore the, the volume is a maximum for this value of the x. Okay, the volume is a maximum. That's fine. Okay, as the second differential is zero, of course, for this value of x that we use, the volume is a maximum for that value of x. Okay, if the second differential for the value of x you found <coughs> is negative, it's a maximum. If it's positive, it's a minimum. So we've justified it's a maximum uh, using that. Okay, so that's how you deal with part C and D of that question. Okay, thank you for watching. Okay.